Hey, what is up? It is Thursday, April 14th, 2022, and I am here again this morning for a new problem. Closest binary search tree value 2. Uh, welcome to Coding with Chef, and uh, thanks for joining and watching. And if you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, and um, comment on the link below. Uh, let me know how I'm doing, and uh, yeah, um, just... Uh, Give me some feedback. Um, so yeah, today uh, another tree problem. I'm doing this a little late, later than I wanted to. Uh, I got um, kind of again. This mornings are rough, right? What can you do? But anyway, let's let's get to it. Um, right. So this is labeled as a hard. Okay, it doesn't look like a hard from first read, but uh, let's go through the details. Uh, given the root of a binary search tree, a target value, an integer k, return the k values in the BST that are closest to the target. You may return the answer in any order. You are guaranteed to have only one unique set of k values in the BST that are closest to the target. Okay. All right, all right. So um, this is the example, 4, 2, 5, 1, 3, this tree that's rooted at 4. It's a binary search tree. <clears throat> so um, that means that we could um, traverse through it pretty quickly. Uh, that means that an in-order traversal through the binary search tree is uh, going to pretty much give us a sorted array. So um, that's good that's uh one way of doing this uh i have a few ways of doing this i'm gonna actually um do this uh in probably a little bit of a less efficient way for now because i'm trying to get some practice with certain data structures uh, but what you can do is one thing is that you can iterate through this binary search tree and efficient solution uh in order uh, of traversal and you essentially could create some kind of like um, sliding window which does this uh, you know pretty fast I guess and it the window is uh, constrained to k values that's something that I'll do in a uh, another solution so I'm gonna label this as um, a solution one and have a uh, another video where I do a faster solution so in solution um, uh, solution one. What I'm going to do, I'm not going to take advantage of the binary search property because I want to uh, just do a plain uh, iteration through the tree. So first, what I'm going to do, and just see if this works, integer double. I'm going to have a data structure that sorts a uh, binary tree. So basically, um, in, I'm going to keep track of the values in the in the tree structure this way, and I'll explain in a second what I'm doing here. Um, okay, so I'm using a comparator. You'll see why I'm using this in a second. Um, and this comparator. So basically, what I'm thinking of doing. Let me before I go into the comparator. Uh, if I iterate through this tree in uh, like a pre-order traversal or some kind of traversal, uh, I'll get values like 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so just to get the values, the k closest values, um, pretty much this difference, if the target is 3.7, right? 1, 4, 8, 6. All I have to do is just subtract value by value from this value, right? And see which ones are the k closest, okay? So that's pretty intuitive, right? Because in this, we have 2.7. I'm going to not round it. I'm going to round it just for brevity. I have 2, 7, 1, 7, uh, 0.7, uh, 1, 7, 1, 7, geez, 1, 7, and 2, 7. Okay, so what are the k closest values? Okay, so the k closest values are basically going to be, and k is 2, so that's going to be these two guys, right? Or these two guys, whatever. 
um, and there's actually the difference is larger so um, yeah so how do we get the K close to, oh and then I let's see one two three four five let's uh, from these values but there there may be more values but anyway let's okay let's um, look for the solution right uh, let's see if we can determine uh, what the K closest values are um, intuitively so if I use if I put those on a heap as I iterate through the tree the K closest values will automatically be sorted right and I don't have to increase the heap size uh, indefinitely right I can do something like uh, I can always have for example if I have a max heap I can have only the smallest values added to this max heap at any time and I can pull off this max heap so that anything larger than k whenever k is exceeded the heap size k is exceeded uh, I can pull off that heap and remember a heap time extraction for the top level element in a max heap is one uh, of one so um the the and the reorganize and it's sorry r of log n so essentially the heap will reorganize itself uh every time i add an element to it and take an element off of it and um i'm only going to have the smallest elements in the end of the day at the end of the max heap we would ask why i'm not using a min heap so um because a min heap orders elements one two three four five while a max heap orders elements five four three two one the reason why is because at any time um the max heap will order elements right let's just say these are just some other elements uh then it'll put three in front but let's say i want the k uh, largest value since k is equal to two equal to two remove three and then two two and one will be left and i can just out i can always prevent the heap from uh putting elements that are larger than the smallest elements on by just maintaining the same heap size okay so uh okay let's put a comparator for a max heap Eval equals e dot value e dot get the value if i'm writing this out because i can compress this notation but point of this is learning so a comparator uh in a comparator since we're comparing values of doubles right the double is the second value of the pair i'm using a pair to maintain why am i using a pair here because the pair is going to um maintain both the value and the difference corresponding to that value i could have used an array i could have used some other data structure but i also sometimes it's nice to work with something semantically nice like a pair okay um so now this is what the comparator does and again max it's a maxi because b is larger than a right so uh b is going to if b is larger than a then essentially the value is going to be uh less than zero and uh, then the larger value gets stuck on the heap first the ordering gets stuck on the heap first and then the smaller value gets second uh and the, so on and so forth so if it was a min if this was a min heap then we just reverse these and then uh we can have a min heap uh because then the order will have the smallest elements in front of the heap okay let's go integer result integer so that's the list that we're returning. Q. Pair integer double. Yeah, Java is wordy. I could obviously in Kotlin or something like that, I could have a much more semantically cleaner <laughs> uh, piece of code. But I'm just trying to get through this here. So the priority queue is the heap that will organize and then stack tree node stack equals new stack okay so um that is the uh that is the priority queue 
Um, and now this now we're gonna go through the iteration of the tree. So I'm just gonna do an in-order traversal. I'm not in order, pre-order traversal now, because those are the easiest to write. Um, but uh, in the future I'm gonna do an um, is order tra uh, it in order traversal because that takes advantage of the property of the the binary search tree property. Um, okay, but this is also useful for any general tree, not only a binary search tree. So that's a nice another nice thing about this. Um, pair double. So now this is just this is basically. Um, you should be familiar with in order traversal iteration uh, or pre order traversal iteration to a binary tree. If not, then I will quickly go over it, but it's not too bad. Um, now minus target. Okay, so here, uh, this is where we uh, add to the priority queue. This is where the work of the tree is done. If pq.size is greater than k, remember I'm using a max heap here, so whenever I use a max heap to get the smallest elements, I have to make sure that, our smallest k elements, I have to make sure that I remove elements uh, that are in front of the heap when the k size is exceeded. Okay, because at that point then the, the heap, the heap will uh, not allow us to get the values we need, uh, the minimum values we need, if we don't do that. Okay, okay, so, uh, let me write this out, let me write that right, not equal to no, stack, no, dot right. Okay, so, what's going on here? So, this is basically, um, the in pre-order traversal. Uh, we could have uh, also written this in a uh, recursive fashion, but the um, iterative fashion is more compact. You have a stack here, and in the recursive uh, implementation of the pre-order traversal, the stack is implicit in the stack frames. Uh, so that's basically um, what it, you know what the traversal looks like if you want to add if you want to emulate adding the values um, remember the stack is last in first out so first you add the first thing you add is the root right and then you add two I'm going by this example on the right here then you add two right and uh, then it, so if the left child is not equal to null then you add two if the right child is not equal to null you add five Right, and then uh, you essentially your for the next this stack that pop you pop off the top element. So I popped off uh, the top element, which is four, right, and uh, so and then I added two and five, right, because the first thing I did was add four. Okay, oh, let's make sure I do that because this is important. We have to push the root. So we have the root of the We push the root of onto the stack right so that would be four we pop the left child in the we push the left child we pop it off be four we push two and five and five then on the next iteration we pop off um five right and then five doesn't have any children so all that's left is two so we pop off two in the stack and then we add well, 1 and 3, and then on the next iteration, we pop off um, 1 and 3. Okay, so basically, the order of the stacks uh, uh, popping and execution uh, will determine the value of the tree, the traversal. Okay, so that's in order, because uh, just compared to the recursive version when you get a chance of what the value should be when you're, I'm not in order, pre-order, what the pre-order version should be, so. Okay, cool, and so let's do the last thing. The last thing is now we have a priority queue, empty, result.add pq.pull, 
Let's get key. Get key. And return result. So basically what's going on here is that we have the priority queue uh, filled with values uh, up to k and these are guaranteed at this point to be the smallest values even though this is a maxi because all the larger elements have been in an online fashion or an active fashion been popped off before the heap could accumulate so whatever is left is still going to be ordered from largest to smallest but it's going to be the smallest uh, elements of the uh, smallest k elements of the total uh, differences that are computed throughout the entire tree okay so let's run this of course let's see what i'm missing here there's always something missing new comparator uh no comparator there let's check if double val less than zero oh yeah <laughs> but i decided to opt for the long route for this so public in compare make sure I get all the values right here ah, I don't need this there we go get in the right parentheses and then result integer Exception, new pair, integer double. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Cannot be passed to comparable. Okay, so. Um, Okay, why is that the case? Uh, PQ that pair integer double is. Uh, I need to pass the comparator and see these little things get you. Okay, cool. And so, yep, there you go. That's the solution. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's basically it could be faster and we could in the future do a faster solution but this is what I'm uh, doing for now um, this is for because essentially this is a k log n solution because you're adding to you're, you're popping off the stack in you know each element you're visiting only once but since you're reordering the stack each time you're uh, essentially doing k uh, log n operation on each iteration so uh, since you're doing at most k of them, right? Uh, you're doing this ordering is going to be uh, a log n or a k log n, and uh, yeah, and then this is another k uh, uh, removal in k log n, right? So uh, yeah, so that's it for now. Um, a little bit of a bumpy ride today, but getting into the swing of things. So I'll see you around next time and stay coding. Uh, and we'll do another solution in the future. Okay.